He groped me for years, but when I finally defended myself, I was punished for bullying the autistic boy now I'm the villain, and he's untouchable. Everyone's protecting him, and my only escape is fighting back in silence. I have known Troy since nursery, kindergarten for Americans, or just anyone, and he has always been a baby. It was always his autism that made him who he was. I don't know why, but he always had a crush on me. I rejected him gently multiple times, but he never took no for an answer. As we grew older, he got worse. He started commenting on my chest, asking to touch them, asking to see them. His friends kept trying to convince me to show him because nobody would be nice enough to give him a chance. And in year seven, sixth grade, he started groping me. I told teachers, but they kept saying that his autism doesn't make him know any better. It was only me. He got jealous when I was in the presence of another guy. He would have meltdowns and I got into trouble because I knew how upset he would get. No, I didn't. It was like my only purpose was to be his. I wasn't allowed to be my own person. The groping continued. I kept telling him to stop. He didn't listen. I remember crying on the floor and teachers just kept saying that his autism makes him like this and that I'm being a good person by taking care of him. His groping hurt. I don't know how to explain it. He just grabbed my chest and butt hard, and it hurts. The groping continued for four years. I was always his caretaker, his girlfriend, his best friend, his. I couldn't stand it anymore. I couldn't take it anymore. It was hot and I wore a skirt and he proceeded to put his hands up my skirt and grope my butt. I lost it and punched him around the nose. His nose got broken and unfortunately now I am getting put into isolation for two months for bullying an autistic kid. He's not a kid though. He's 16 years old. He acts normal around his friends. He treats everyone else with respect. He's not a kid. Now everyone hates me. I have been receiving death threats and people have been saying he should have done worse. Now all I want to do is curl up and die. Maybe I should have been nicer. Maybe I should have been more sympathetic. Maybe I should have just accepted it. I could have been his only chance. For the record, I don't despise autistic people. He is not a representative of them. He is just an awful person. Troy is just a horrible person. Thank you for letting me vent at it. Hi all. I didn't expect so much attention so thank you for the validation. Giving my context, his parents are prominent people in our community. His dad is a third generation army something, IDK, and his mom is known for always holding all of the stuff for kids, like the summer fairs, etc. She is also part of the school board and friends with the higher ups if you will, which is why this happened at all. I wasn't technically his caretaker because I didn't have to feed him, clothe him, etc. I just had to be his friend. His dad is also friends with the police station they go way back, so that's another reason why they didn't do much. Or just took a statement then wrote him off as mentally disabled. And the police here just suck ass here. Police officers have essayed many women before here. They just get let off, unfortunately, onto a semi-update. Firstly, my parents will look into lawyers. We just couldn't afford one, and I was always too scared to get one. I guess it was because I had been so neglected that I just thought nobody would believe me. However, my other relatives said that they would chip in and pay for a good lawyer. Meanwhile, my parents took me out of the school, and I will stay at my grandma's for a while to recover. My auntie is also going to pay for my therapy so I will enjoy that much needed therapy. Thank you so much for the kind words. I hope you all miraculously wake up with more money in your bank's accounts than you expected. Edit two, hi all, I didn't expect this story to end up on TikTok so quickly. I would like to thank you all again for your words and thank you so much to those who have been reaching out to me. It means a lot. I would also like to point out that this is a throwaway account and I want to stay anonymous but thank you all so much again for the kind words and comments. I realized that I was never in the wrong, that I am a person. Thank you. I truly hope you all have the best days ever. You all are amazing. Relevant comments from OP Comment 1. Is the kid cognitively challenged? OP, nope, he has mild autism if that makes sense. He's actually quite good around people. Just not me, IG. Comment 2, I would get law enforcement involved. OP, we tried to. They just didn't care because he is mentally challenged. My parents genuinely tried to do something, but when everyone defends him, they believe the majority. I mean, when I usually say this story, people automatically think I hate autistic people. I don't. 
Because autistic people don't do this, horrible people do. Autism isn't the label for assault, the label is sexual assaulter. Update, firstly, I would like to thank you all so much for your kind words and messages. Thank you for your support and validation. Your words meant so much to me. Also, I thought I would explain the whole I hope you all miraculously wake up with more money in your bank account. Comment. I heard someone in TikTok say this and thought it would be a nice thing to say as some people did question it in my messages. But yeah, thank you all again. Before this update starts, I would like to say that this all occurred like two weeks ago now. I just reached my breaking point and needed to vent. Hence why the update may be soon to some, this won't be the final update. But an update, I would also like to clear the air with my parents. Now, unfortunately, my parents come from a country where this stuff is normal. Not only that, but I am partially to blame as I didn't say anything. Eventually, I did tell them and they tried their best to help me. But they didn't know how. Though I do acknowledge their efforts, I am still going to be taking time to heal from them as well. My entire family also had a go at them and expressed their disappointment. The best thing for now is for me to spend some time apart from them. So to begin, I left the school. After my parents had heard that I got into trouble seriously because of Troy again, they basically thought it was time to pull me out. I am due to start my new school in two weeks. I have also been trying to settle at my grandma's house as I just needed a fresh start with fresh people. To be honest, I have never felt so free. I have had to deal with that torment for years and years. So now I can enjoy the pleasure of walking home and not seeing him or bumping into him. So I feel great. On to the serious stuff. As I had mentioned, my family basically decided to pay for a lawyer, and we are now hoping to have a lawsuit against basically everyone involved. My grandma also had to go to put nicely with the school's board for basically allowing nepotism to harass other girls. She called all of the teachers a disgrace for endangering not only me but other people and saying how none of the teachers who allowed this deserve to even step foot into a school. This experience has also not been all sunshines and daisies. After the suit was claimed or made, ick, my parents got letters and messages basically asking for the case to be dropped. My parents obviously said no. But it still didn't stop the harassment. I eventually got harassed too. All of the people giving me death threats decided to go into graphic detail on what Troy wanted to do to me. Spoiler, it wasn't great and Troy's parents showed up on my doorstep demanding to see me and talk to me and how Troy is ready to apologize. Thankfully, by then my uncle and I had been on the way to my grandma's house. However, my parents obviously didn't let them in regardless and said that if they wanted to communicate, it had to be through a lawyer. The harassment didn't stop. And eventually, Troy sent me a message on a burner account detailing all of the things he was going to do if got the opportunity to, and that I should be grateful that I managed to walk away with just a groping. Troy also kept spewing on about how I'm nothing but a whore or slut, etc., and I should be grateful that someone so popular even looked my way. He kept saying how if I just let him fuck me, he wouldn't have groped me. However, I know if I did that I would no longer be myself. I would be his property forever. The thought of that makes me want to vomit. Also, his logic doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, I just got receipts and blocked him. I also asked my parents to help me change my number, and I did. My grandma, being the person she is, decided that wasn't good enough and got me a trauma. Thanks, grandma. I am starting therapy the day after tomorrow, and I am hoping to start family therapy in August as, truthfully, I don't know if I'm mad at my parents or should be mad. Like, is it my fault for not saying anything? But that's all the update I can give you for now. The lawsuit will be a whole other process, and hopefully if I remember, I can update you all again. Thank you so much for your words. I'm so grateful for all of you. Your support means the world to me. I hope this update is clear enough, and I apologize if you've had to read through all of this to get here. Now, let's dive into the next chapter of my life. Story 2 my autistic brother has spent over 400 pounds of my hard-earned money on Lego, and my mom is completely on board with it. I'm 14 and my brother, who is 16, has autism. This has become a struggle that I can no longer bear. Before you jump to conclusions, let me clarify something important. He isn't like the stereotypical autistic individuals you might see in the media. He is bright, functional, and capable in many ways, yet when things don't go his way, he can become violent. 
He has trouble with certain bodily signals, which means he often has accidents at home, though curiously, he manages just fine when we're out. Today was the breaking point for me. To give you some context, let me describe what a typical day looks like. I woke up to the sound of my brother hitting me repeatedly, his frustration spilling over onto me. My parents were downstairs, blissfully unaware as they prepared breakfast, desperate to stop the onslaught. I shouted for my mom. She came upstairs, and instead of addressing my pain, she pulled my brother away and rewarded him with chocolate. Then she turned on me, scolding me for yelling and confiscating my electronics for an hour as punishment. When I returned home from school that day, I held on to a glimmer of hope, believing that maybe, just maybe, things would be better. But as I stepped through the door, that hope quickly evaporated like morning mist under a blazing sun. I managed to force myself to tackle a bit of homework though my mind wandered, heavy with the weight of the day. Finally, I succumbed to the pull of the Xbox, craving a few moments of escapism in a world where I could be anyone but myself. About half an hour into my game, just as I began to lose myself in the virtual realm, my younger brother stormed into my room with all the grace of a tornado. He craved attention again, and before I knew it, he was hitting me, relentless and furious. Each thump felt like a hammer striking an already battered wall. I tried to brush him off, tried to immerse myself back in the game, but the onslaught didn't let up. The irritation swelled until I couldn't take it anymore. Desperate, I called out for my mom, my voice tinged with frustration and fear. She came rushing in, but instead of offering the support I so desperately needed, she chose to reward my brother for stopping his assault. I could hardly process it when she turned her gaze on me, scolding me for letting the situation escalate. In a swift motion, she confiscated my electronics for the entire day leaving me feeling stripped of my last refuge. Now, as I write this on a phone my friend graciously gifted me carefully hidden away under my bed, my only connection to the outside world, I feel trapped in this small, suffocating space. For the past five years, I've been caught in an unrelenting cycle of frustration and despair, and today that weight feels heavier than ever, a thick fog enveloping my thoughts. Today was different, though. Today, my brother spotted a Lego set that ignited a familiar fire in him. In a split second, everything spiraled into chaos. He lashed out at me again, his fists striking relentlessly until I felt utterly defeated, as if a massive wave had crashed over me, leaving me gasping for breath. My voice cracked as I called for my mom once more, a last plea for support. But instead of the comfort I sought, I was met with a jarring reality. Instead of stepping in, she allowed him to order every single piece of Lego he desired using my own debit card. My heart sank like a stone as I realized the magnitude of what was happening. The money I had painstakingly saved over two long years from my paper round every penny earned through countless early mornings and night matches. It was supposed to be for a PC, a piece of freedom I had dreamed of a window to the world outside this house. And now it was wasted on toys that would only bring temporary joy to my brother. Words cannot fully capture the depth of my frustration. I hate this situation. I feel as though my life has been reduced to an endless struggle, a never-ending tide of conflict where I am merely a spectator waiting for the next wave of despair to crash down on me. Writing this post is a release, it's a way for me to voice the feelings that have been bubbling inside, but I doubt it will change anything. Still, I must express myself, if only to feel a sense of agency, however fleeting. Is there anything I can do about this? Being a minor in the UK complicates matters even more. I feel so powerless, trapped in a situation where my hard work feels devalued and my voice silenced. To sum it all up, my autistic brother has spent over 400 pounds of my hard-earned money on Lego, and my mom wholeheartedly supports this decision. Each purchase feels like another nail in the coffin of my dreams, leaving me wondering if I'll ever break free from this cycle. Edit. Thank you all for the incredible outpouring of support and understanding. I honestly never expected anyone to care about my situation. Edit 2. Wow. 2,000 upvotes. 
You guys are amazing. I'm writing this update to address some of your questions and to share my plans moving forward. First and foremost, thank you for all the kindness and advice on my original post. I've tried to respond to as many messages as I can, but the sheer volume is overwhelming in a good way. To answer some common questions, moving in with another family member isn't an option. They all live over 100 miles away and don't seem to take my situation seriously. As for getting my money back as the cardholder, that's not feasible. I need a legal guardian to accompany me to the bank for that and hitting him back. That's not a solution. I'm just a weak, five foot tall, 14 year old, while he's a strong, six foot tall, 16 year old. If I retaliated, it would only escalate the violence, and I know my mom would punish me even more severely. To everyone who has offered me money in private messages and comments, thank you from the bottom of my heart, but I can't accept anything. I've come to realize that this situation is far more serious than any amount of money could resolve. Finally, after reading hundreds of your comments, I've decided that the best course of action is to make a run for it out of school to the police station on Wednesday. I plan to show them the video evidence I've collected and the bruises on my arms. Again, thank you all so much for your invaluable advice. Your support gives me hope, even in this difficult time. Please let me know if this is what I should do, or if there's a better alternative. Edit, just got three videos of this story in a row on TikTok, that's absolutely crazy. And hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real-life stories happening around you.